I'm Tani. I'm with Lighthouse Communications. In the world of STEM, science, technology, engineering, math, and medicine, the hottest word right now is storytelling. It's popular for a reason. With it, you can make complex concepts, nuanced findings, and dense data more accessible and memorable. Okay, sounds great, but then you go to try it and suddenly you feel like you're trying to put together furniture with no instructions and no idea what the finished product is supposed to look like. So what exactly is meant by the term story anyway? It isn't just a fable or a bedtime story. In the STEM context, there are three ways that you can strategically use story tools to make your ideas more accessible. Number one, use story snacks. What we call story snacks are short yet vivid content that helps illustrate an idea. For example, comparisons, metaphors, and analogies like the one I used at the beginning of this video about assembling furniture. They're easy to access and digest, like snacks. Here's another example of a story snack. Let's say you wanted to explain why lithium ion batteries take so long to charge beyond 80%. You could go into a complex and detailed description of currents and cathodes, or you could use a story snack and say, imagine a battery as a parking lot with a hundred spots. The first 10 cars that pull in will have a very easy time finding a spot. But by the time you get to the 80th or 90th car, they have to drive up and down for a long time looking for an open spot. A battery is similar. Once it gets almost full, those ions take a long time to find a spot. It's not a full blown story, but it has the story characteristics that help us understand your idea. One critical thing to note here, after I gave the metaphor, I connected it back to the main idea of batteries and ions at the end. The second way to use stories is to start with a story and then follow with your data. It introduces your concept and primes your audience to better understand the data to follow. Kind of like an appetizer, what's your appetite? A few years ago, I was working with an engineering leader who was trying to convince other leaders in his company of the critical need to standardize across their platform. He had slide after slide of really good data, but his point just wasn't getting anywhere. He thought about other times when a lack of standardization had caused major problems in history. And he remembered his story. So he went back to the other leaders and started his presentation like this. In 1904, the city of Baltimore burned to the ground, but it didn't have to. The problem wasn't a lack of equipment, hoses, firefighters, the problem was there was no standardization for the connections on the fire hydrants. So even though firefighters from surrounding boroughs all showed up, they couldn't connect their hoses to the hydrants and they had to watch the city burn. The reason I'm telling you this story is because if we don't standardize across our platform, our company is in real danger. Then he went into a deeper dive of his supporting data with their full attention. And guess what? They prioritized his recommendations for change. Introducing his data with a short story made it an enormous impact on how the rest of his data was received. The third way to use stories in STEM is to shape your dense information using a story structure. In other words, instead of story and then data, you're putting that data itself into story form. Why? It's so easy to fall into the trap of giving info as a list of bullet points or a series of graphs. We see this a lot in academia, but science shows us that the audience can't take it in as easily. For example, when I teach about kelp in my environmental work, I could show a slide that looks like this and say, there are four things you need to know about kelp. It belongs to the Ucrophytophyllum. In other words, it's a kind of algae and it photosynthesizes like a plant requiring sunlight and it has a flexible stipe. Very academic and frankly, kind of boring. It's all and, and, and. Instead, if we use a narrative structure like and, but, 
Therefore, we frame the information with a storytelling structure that our brains are hardwired to understand. Let me show you the same info in a story structure. Like plants, kelp needs to be able to reach for the sunlight to photosynthesize. And it has to have a flexible stem or stipe that can withstand heavy wave action. But that flexibility makes it unable to stay upright. Therefore, it has evolved gas-filled bladders called pneumatocysts that help it float its blades up to the sun rays. See? Easier to follow, more interesting, and memorable. Storytelling is easier than it might seem. Use these tools yourself and let us know about your favorite strategies in the comments. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe for more.